Hey guys, welcome to the Rusty Beauty's Garage and to what I think it's going to be the last episode of the 1958 TR3 restoration or body restoration that we are doing here and that's because we are done with the body. In the last episode we dealt with some dents, especially this fender here had lots of dents and stuff like that. So we dealt with that, the other fender as well had some issues here and there, we dealt with those and we mounted everything finally, assembled the car for a final check of gaps and fitment of everything which it still fits perfectly. So what is left now, well we need to lift the body and weld some stuff underneath. Right there there's a flange under the floor from the drive shaft tunnel that goes this way so that needs to be welded there we also need to make a small repair right here in this corner there's also a small problem here with the valance it is too high here and too low here so we're gonna take out the valance and the fender and we're gonna adjust the curve on the valance hopefully we can do that on the shrinker stretcher and we also need to do some repairs on the frame and the front end. So I literally finished the previous episode five minutes ago, which means that the car has been assembled for the last half an hour. And now I'm going to start disassembling it. <laughs> well, yeah, we have to take everything apart because like I mentioned in one of the previous episodes, the trailer that the owner uses is narrow. It won't fit the way it is. We have to take the fenders off and yeah, the front fenders maybe are gonna fit because they are not sticking too far out. Well, they are actually, the front end of the fender sticks out, but the rear fenders are too far out too. So I'm gonna have one more look around just to enjoy for a little longer the way she looks when she is assembled and then I'm gonna start taking her apart. <laughs> And sadly, just like that, she's back to bare bones. <laughs> well, not completely because that fender is still on. I left it on because remember how we said that we wanted to do some adjustment to this curve here. So let's see if we can do that on the shrinker stretcher. That's gonna be tricky. In the worst case scenario, we can make cuts like there was a cut here that somehow I welded in the wrong place, I think. Anyway, we'll see if we can shrink that. If not, we're gonna make a cut and we're gonna... But also here, it needs to be stretched a little, right where this wrinkle is. That wrinkle needs to actually stretch very little. So let's see if we can fit it on the shrinker stretcher. Now it fits much better. Well, I'm cheating. <laughs> I wasn't able to fix it with the shrinker stretcher. That didn't do nothing. So I ended up making cuts here, multiple actually. I made a cut there, a cut here, a cut here. And I pulled and I pushed and I welded it. And now the curve matches pretty well. Okay, so that was the second to last thing that I wanted to do before we lift the body. The the last thing I haven't mentioned yet, but I just remembered is right here, there's a cage nut missing. So before we forget that, 
I'm gonna take the old cage out from here and we're gonna spot weld a new one there because I forgot. Okay, so we installed a new cage nut here and we installed the brace that Phil made when he took the body for media blasting. Now I'm just gonna put a clamp there as well to hold it and we're gonna remove all the body mounts so there's a body mount there there's two here there's two more here two more here there must be one there and one there i believe but they were not installed before so we left them off and there's one more here so we're gonna take these off and then actually i have to reorganize the shop a little bit so we can lift the body and pull the frame out and I don't know where we're gonna put it. The shop is a mess. <laughs> it is so overcrowded here, it's crazy. Even these huge two boxes here that uh, tomorrow maybe I'm gonna get rid of some shelving over there, ugly shelving, and we're gonna put this two box there. Eh, anyway, we will see. Okay, give me a few minutes and I'll bring you back for the take off. Okay, all the body mounts are removed now and it's ready to be lifted. Now Phil sent me a picture of how he strapped it so he can lift it. So he used eight straps, I believe, uh, to here, to I don't know where else, on the back, two on the battery box and two on these hooks. But I think that's a little bit overkill for what it is it is a pretty light body actually so i think i'm gonna use four plus we don't need to lift it too high i mean the rear end needs to go a little bit higher so the body can come above these shock mounts the front end needs to come a little bit higher actually not really i think it only needs to go up by like six seven ten inches let's say not even a foot and I'm going to be able to slide the frame out and come this way. So I'm just going to use four straps. That's all. Okay, okay. I decided to use six. <laughs> so I strapped it here and here because this is so flimsy. The inner fenders here, when I started tightening this, they started coming together, even though there's this thing that holds them there separated but the bottom end started coming together so eh, that's why i hooked them up here as well these here seem to be good so yeah let's lift it a little bit just for a test to see how it's going to be balanced because never lifted a tr3 before and i don't know where the center of the gravity is so we might start lifting the front end more or the rear end but i'm estimating it is somewhere here but I don't know. So let's see. Okay, can someone pull the frame off, please? <laughs> no? Have a seat. <laughs> okay, sit a little bit higher. Does that make you feel better? A little bit. I could put this pole here. <laughs> nah.
net. So I think that's more than enough to support it. Like it is stable. <laughs> it is stable. I'm gonna keep the straps there and the uh, engine stand for now, even though that's probably gonna be in my way. So I might remove it at some point, but for now it is good. Like it is pretty solid not going anywhere so let's crawl underneath and see what we need to do there actually somebody in the comments of some of the previous video uh, offered a rotisserie the wooden style rotisserie that they made for their own TR3 based on the TR6 rotisserie that I have the plans for on my website if you don't know anyways I don't think a rotisserie for this body is a good idea unless it attaches in a different way i don't know how it attaches but you know on the tr6 and tr4 the rotisserie attaches here to the a post and the b post however here i'm not really trusting this a post and the b post for that matter to support the whole car because i'm afraid that they're gonna twist not that it's gonna fall or something but they're gonna twist and all our work that we had done so far on the gaps and everything is gonna be uh, for nothing. Also this brace attaches here to the hinge location where the rotisserie needs to attach. So it was gonna require a lot of work. I think this way it's gonna be not as easy as if the body was on its side, but still it's not too hard to work underneath. So I appreciate the offer, but I'm gonna pass. All right, let's go underneath and see what we've done. Okay, so here we can wipe a little bit and wire wheel maybe the burnt paint and we can paint all that. And here, this is what I'm talking about. Only right here we need to make plug welds or even edge welds, we'll see what we're gonna do. And we're gonna look around and see if there's anything else that needs to be welded, but I think we're pretty good. <laughs> Come on, let's fuck. I also want to revise these. You see, I left them to be ground later because it was really hard to go under the car, but now it is easier. So we're gonna grind these nicely and there was something in the front that i wanted to do but now the table is in the way so we might need to find a different way to support it let me see oh we have access from here so i want to finish this weld here uh and here and here as well and that was it everything else is done so we're gonna do those so you see there's not that much on the actual body uh, what we need to do on the frame is, oh, that's the rear end now. So we need to do repairs on the front. Oh, here, Phil, if you're missing this, it's here. <laughs> it's not mine for sure. Anyway, so what we want to do is uh, this here. This has been mangled somehow so we want to straighten that it's basically a straightening job and right here this is a weak spot for tr3s and tr4s because there's a bracket that comes here and it closes this side and it closes the other side as well but the top side is open and it basically creates a pocket and that fills up with mud and water and stuff and it just rusts inside so i'm gonna take a look here and see if this needs repair but what i did on david's tr4 is i boxed this i basically made a piece that comes out here and goes down and goes around these holes and it encloses this so this becomes first of all it becomes more sturdy and second it prevents mud from going in so that's what we have to do here then we're gonna put the body back on the frame just so few can uh, move it around easy because it's gonna be much harder to pick up the body like that right if it is on its wheels the wheels that few made that's actually a great 
structure it worked so well for me so far so anyway oh one more thing i'm forgetting that's the corner over there remember that we need to repair that corner because we missed it but that's all rot there so now we have access from underneath and we can repair it all right just a quick update so i welded this here and this i actually moved the table temporary and i welded under here too so i welded that as well on both sides then i put the table back and i welded here both sides so that's done i even ground here this lip and now i'm gonna go ahead and i'm gonna cut that corner off and i'm gonna replace that okay and now for the most complicated part that's the last repair on the body as far as i know and these are the two dents here that i don't care about the bottom but i care about this here and this here and you see how it is raised so when you look from behind we have this part here unfortunately there's no access from anywhere to that from the inside it's enclosed on all sides you see so i don't know what to do like i see a few options here one is to weld a strip of metal here and pull and hammer on this but how do we pull the other option is and i think that's what i'm gonna do i'm gonna try to make a cut right here inside this channel wide enough so i can put something inside flat piece of metal or something and just hammer down on it so we can pull this down and third option is just cut this piece of metal like make a cut here make a cut here here and remove few spot welds from here and take the whole piece out reshape it and then weld it but it's complicated i don't know how did even this happen i don't know so weird let me think about it well guess which option i chose <sighs> there you go and i decided to cut even the bottom and just weld it after i mean without bothering with spot welds and stuff so <laughs> how did that even happen anyway let's go repair it Ta-da! It's all done. It's a little bit wavy, but yeah, you said it. A little bit of body filler and it's gonna be perfect. <laughs> Let's do this one. Oh, this one got done already? Well, seriously, it's not perfect. It's gonna still need body filler, but it's 100% better than what it was. So, I think it is all done now. It can be put on the frame as soon as we complete these repairs here. Okay, so this is what I made. Now I'm gonna weld it all over. And the other one is here. So this, it's just bent. It's not 
broken or anything it's just bent so we're gonna try to pull it out i'm afraid i'm gonna have to heat it but it's too close to the wood here so i don't know we'll see All right, so it's the next day and I was rushing it yesterday because this is the last repair of the car. And I was like, okay, let's get it done. Let's get it done. I wanted to finish it last night and it became like nine o'clock and I was doing stupidities here. And I realized that this is not the way. I was not doing it properly and I was not gonna do a good job. So I finally, gave up and said you know what let's get it done properly tomorrow when we have more time so that's the way we either need to replace this or we need to straighten it to a point where it is usable again so let's see that my friends officially is the last repair on this car I didn't grind it but I think it's more solid like that <laughs> just being lazy I think for what it is doesn't need to be ground we drilled this hole here and that's it so now what's left is to mount the frame back on the dolly <laughs> because I had to slide it to the side to repair that. So we're gonna mount it back on the dolly. We're gonna put the body back on the frame and then we're gonna pack her and get her ready for a pickup. <sighs> Finally, this project is done. there you go the body is back on the frame ready to go <laughs> i just need to organize my garage now it's such a mess it's like i've been focused on this car for the last two weeks three weeks i don't know after my vacation so i can finish it so it can go and we can have a free spot here we're gonna have to do some seasonal repairs people who've been waiting since last september for this spring to bring their cars but these are not gonna be something major like i'm not expecting engine rebuild and stuff like that it's gonna be just uh, replacing a alternator or wiper motor or doing some electrical work or stuff like that because our main project has been waiting patiently here since i don't know when maybe more than a month ago anyway this is the 1970 tr6 if you want to follow this project i'm gonna put a link to its playlist there are like 40 videos i believe or something like that about it so this is where we're gonna end this one so i hope you enjoyed this project but we're gonna have to say goodbye to it because that's what we were hired to do to restore the body you know what has been done on it so i'm not gonna list it here so in the next few days phil is gonna come to pick it up 
this is the condition that he's going to take it in because we're not going to assemble it anymore because it's not going to fit in his trailer. All the fenders and valance and bonnet and boot lid he's going to put in the back of his truck. And I believe he's going to take the body only to a paint shop where they're going to do all the body work and they're going to paint it. In the meantime, he's already rebuilding the engine and the transmission. So he's also going to rebuild the suspension, paint the frame and all that. And eventually he's going to start assembling it. How long is that going to take him? I don't know, but I really, but I certainly hope that soon we're going to see it back on the road in all its glory. So if you're wondering how long this job took, up to last night, it was 159 hours since the beginning, since I put my hands on it. So this morning we had another two hours, so it's 161 hours altogether. Is this how much my TR3 is going to take? No, definitely, because here we were lucky that the spare tire carrier was not rusted. We haven't done almost anything on the rear valance. Normally these are weak spots on the TR3s, as far as I know. This is the only one that I worked, but as far as I know from David, there's always rust around the cups in the back, around here. When you open this here, there's a worm's nest inside, but here we didn't have it because somehow this car got preserved. The floors were in a bad shape, but the back, I don't know how it was solid. Also in the front, on the front fenders, on the wheel wells, I know that there's weak spots. This car was in pretty good shape. So I'm assuming that on my TR3, it's going to take more than that, probably more than 200 hours. And I'm looking forward to that, but I don't know when that's going to happen. I have my GT6 sitting in the corner, which I'm losing hope. Like I keep saying that I want to start working on it, but uh, I don't know. How can I do that when there's always projects here waiting to be dealt with? And I'm always in a hurry because the next one is coming. Anyway, good problems to have, right? <laughs> Anyway, so that's going to be everything for this project, guys. Thank you so much for watching, for sharing, for subscribing, for supporting the channel. I'm not going to talk about Patreon and uh, PayPal and stuff like that. You know where to find this information if you want to. So thank you guys for everything. Stay tuned for more videos. Soon we're going to put our hands on the 70 TR6 again. So stay tuned for that. Thank you, guys. I'll see you soon. Bye.